The average American voter tends to vote for personalities they like. And needless to say, we have a lot of personality here in 2016. But for those of you who would like to make a more informed decision, I want you to consider three areas of policy that I think are most important when voting for president. Number one, very top of the list, foreign policy. Let me tell you why. The president is commander-in-chief of the military. As it currently stands, the military will do whatever the president tells them to. Congress has little to no say over what the president can do, at least in the short term, regarding foreign policy. Now, Congress can control funding of the military, of course, but Congress is unlikely to defund military actions when the president has our troops deployed because that would be putting our troops at risk. So, as we've seen for the last several presidencies, the president really, in practice, doesn't even have to consult with Congress if they want to engage in military conflict. The second issue you should consider, trade policy. There's plenty of debate over whether or not free trade with other countries gives us better job opportunities, whether it gives us more access to a wider variety of goods, or whether we lose a lot of high-paying jobs to outsourcing. In this video, I'm not going to take a side in that debate, although people who know me know where I stand on this. Oh, right, right, the blog. But I do want to talk about why you should consider it very carefully when deciding who to vote for for president. Even though the president needs the Senate to ratify any trade agreements, it's up to the president to decide how they will be enforced. These trade agreements, such as NAFTA, CAFTA, um, the free trade we have with China, largely as a result of the World Trade Organization, well, these are very complicated agreements with all kinds of little conditions and stipulations, and it's up to the president to enforce them. That means even when we're bound by a free trade agreement, um, the president, if they wanted to restrict free trade or they wanted to in some way try to push the other country into maybe renegotiating the terms, well, the president could find reasons to maybe put tariffs in place or take other measures. We've already seen Obama do this. He's implemented a 35% tariff on tires imported from China on the basis that China has been manipulating their currency and that's his way of penalizing them for it. So, wherever you stand on trade policy, consider that the president has a considerable amount of power when it comes to trade policy. Uh, lastly, I think you should also consider civil liberties. Congress tends to go along with the president when it comes to issues of civil liberties, even when it's widely unpopular. The NDAA of 2012, for example, was widely unpopular, yet 92 out of 100 senators voted in favor of it, and it wasn't even down party lines. The eight senators who opposed it were a coalition of Republicans and Democrats, and the 92 who supported it were a mixture of Republicans and Democrats. So it's largely up to the president as far as how that will be enforced. Now here's what I don't think you should consider as much when voting for president, other than personality, of course. Um, other than that, it's domestic policy. That may sound strange. Domestic policy is very important. We need to be talking about what we're going to do with Social Security, tax reform, etc. Um, the rising cost of college, health care. But I want you to consider this. The president doesn't get much of anything without Congress when it comes to domestic policy. Furthermore, the president will often go against what they ran on just for the sake of getting something done, just because that's what Congress gave them. I'll give you two very big examples. Bill Clinton, he regards his greatest domestic achievement as the Welfare Reform Act of 1996. But that was a Republican bill. That was something Republicans had been pushing for for decades. Bill Clinton may consider that his greatest domestic achievement, but that was actually Newt Gingrich's achievement. It was largely Newt Gingrich and the Republicans who controlled Congress who wrote that law. Now let's take the other one, the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare. This was actually written by the Democrats in Congress. I want to remind you that when Obama ran for president in 2008, he was actually against this very bill that he now holds up as his greatest domestic achievement. Obama was against the individual mandate, that is the requirement that we buy health insurance from the private sector. 
he was in favor of the public option, the idea that we would have a government-run health insurance option that we could buy into if we so choose. Hillary Clinton's plan was the individual mandate, rely on the private sector, require people to buy it. It was Hillary Clinton who got what she wanted, and that's why we should really be calling it Clinton Care, if anything. So, my point there is that whichever party is in control of Congress, they get the domestic policies they want. The president, however, controls foreign policy, trade, and the implementation of civil liberties and immigration policies. So, I hope this has been informative. Uh, raise any questions or comments in the section below. Thank you very much.